today's headlines with headliners. I can't dance today. I cannot dance. I, I refuse to do this. On today's show? On today's show. I'm going to need you to dance. Hey. Oh, oh he opened it up. <laughs> He's serious when the ugly face comes out. <laughs> today's show is actually one of those shows where it's like, we usually have a lot of fun on the show, but yeah. today's show is a topic that just resonates throughout the United States and across and, and, and all around the world, especially today. It's very relevant. Here's what I'm going to try to do. Because this is a heavy subject in general and uh, we are comics, I'm going to try to just be the funny guy. Okay? Now, there's going to be some serious moments on the show, but I'm going to try to find some funny <laughs> in everything. Some of it you're going to agree with. Other stuff you're just going to be like, this dude is stupid. And I need that to be known now. With that said, so that was a disclaimer. That was I'm a disclaimer. putting it out front so they know some of the stuff I don't even agree with. I'm just playing the comedian's advocate and saying whatever will get a chuckle. Likely now, story. I'm Nate Jackson, the host of today's he uh, Headlines with Headliners. You can catch me on season eight at Wild and Out MTV every Thursday night. Watch, tune in, enjoy yourself. I'm with my incredible other host of the show. Teron Von Gossery. I'm Teron. You can find me at Laugh Factory Mondays and Thursdays at 10. Hey. And on Fox on the uh, on the show, So Me. Hey, it is your girl, Kanisha Bus. You can find me on Sirius XM or over at All Deaf Digital. Click in. So, a lot of our viewers and listeners actually emailed us and they wanted us to have a headlineless show that actually just tied up. We t tend to have a lot of headlines that deal with race. Yeah, it's, but all, that's, it's all trending topics. It's trending topics. That's, yeah. you know, it's luck of the draw, really. And unfortunately, it's a lot of bad luck when it comes to being black in this country right now. And so we're going to have a comprehensive conversation about race, race-related topics, and we hope you at home, the listeners and the viewers, continue this at your own time. You're seeing your face, people, right now. First thing that I have that's submitted by a viewer is how do we feel about race relations right now in the United States? Who wants to go first? Let's do it like a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being elation, uh, 1 being, man, I'm moving now. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with, um, to be very honest, a uh, 4, maybe a 5. Race relations to me is not as bad in the United States as the media would like to portray it. And I'll tell you why. The, in, the millennial generation does not care about race as much as they care about Pokemon Go. Like, yeah. they they will judge you based on the fact that you have or do not have Pokemon Go way more than the color of your skin. They'll base it more on the team that you like or the kind of music or the artist. If you prefer Little Yachty over Little Uzi, then the race that you have. However, it's the older generation that tends to seep in and they still make race a thing. I believe that race relations in the United States of America is the best it's ever been. And it's just now we have camera phones to prove things. Now we have social media to get things out. Now we have headlines with headliners, which talks about this on a weekly basis. Something we did not have before. Something that was hidden before. I feel that the, the, ter the like number of get people... Get it out! No, it's just the number of people that use the word nigger on a regular basis is in a decline. In a decline. I really feel that. They just threw an A on it because they're saying nigga everywhere. What are you talking about? No, no, no. The A is yeah, different. I was, I'm talking I, about I, I nigga was at with the store intent. the other day and heard two Mexican dudes walking by. Sure. Yeah, like, nigga, you stupid, nigga, 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 please. Yeah. I looked up like, come on, bruh. But that's the thing. They're not doing it with the negative intent that it was intended with before. The malice is no longer it's, there. It's not. Um, there are groups of people that clearly use it with malice, but the number is in a decline. And the way, reason I feel that is because growing up in D.C., Outside of D.C. is Virginia. And we mm -hmm. have a city called Lynchburg that's right next to Blacksburg. Like, this is not a joke, right. right? That word was a very common word for people to use. The word colored was very common. We used to drive to school on Lee Jackson Memorial H Highway, which Lee Jackson is one of the, uh, w was one of the generals in the Confederate Army. Virginia was the capital of the South. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a decline in that kind of behavior. That kind of behavior. Uh, I have, in my personal experience, 
coming to Los Angeles from Washington, D.C., I will tell you this. The police officers in, in L.A. have been nicer to me than all the police officers in Virginia. I feel like racial profiling, which the NAACP claims that Virginia has possibly the worst racial profiling, profiling in the country, is at a low in Los Angeles. Now, are, is there still racial tension? 100%. 100%. L.A., on the flip side, is also one of the most segregated cities I have ever been to. When I say Compton, you know who lives there. When I say East L.A., you know who I'm talking about. When I say Beverly Hills, you know what I'm speaking of. Like, there's different races that live in different portions of the city. Something that, in my experience, was not something that I was familiar with growing up. It was a little Korea, too. Oh, oh, yeah. There's everything. Little Italy, yeah. little Ethiopia. But I have one question that I have to ask with yes. that. Because you said that you've seen this uh, decline. But do you feel like with Trump in the presidential election and everybody being outwardly more, I guess, racist, um, do you think it's gone back up during the election? Because I feel like there's a lot of people who haven't been able to say what they have wanted to say since the civil rights movement. And now that Trump has come forward and it's like this platform for ignorance and and people are coming out of the woodwork saying the things that they haven't said for the last 20 years, which is the older generation. I don't think it's a, a lot of the younger generation, but do you feel like that it might have declined, but the presidential election has made it like more intense right now? Well, first of all, that's a worry of mine is because it is the older generation and the older generation tends to be more likely to vote yes. to actually get up because it's like the younger generation who were all gung ho for Bernie on Saturday. were like, Oh, I didn't know I had to get up at eight o'clock in the morning on Tuesday to go do this. If this was Saturday, I would have definitely done this. Yeah. If this was Saturday at four or at one Oak, I would have gone and voted, but because it's actually at a poll and I have to go and t be in line for hours, I'm not willing to do it. Yeah. The older generation, which does tend to, to actually group up and have these very subversive racial thoughts have come more to light. And do I think Trump himself is bringing this out? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not one of those people who just like says, oh, anyone that likes Trump is racist. I do no, not believe that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the campaign I, as a whole, I feel like, has a racial had a lot overtone. of racial undertone, overtone, sure. and between tone. And, and I've seen a lot of that, but a lot of things that people are agreeing with with Donald Trump is are his policies, his overall policies, and a lot of small businesses are agreeing with him because they think they'll, he will be very good for business. I don't like to lump everyone together. I do think that now, because of Trump, all the, the, the rug of political correctness that was covering a lot of this stuff yes. up has been lifted a lot more. Social media has definitely brought a lot of things to the, to the forefront. When I see people who just go... who tweet about Obama calling him blatantly a monkey. Well, if you're tweeting about that, what were you thinking about before? So that, to me, is very blatant. Overall, I think racism is at an all-time low. Now, what I do think is at an all-time high is the flip side of that. Do I think people are more racist? No. Do I think people are more places? Yes. Which means they think that people should know their place. So if I, if, if I as a bank manager, as a white bank manager, get, a, get an application and says, and it says Lucretia Johnson, and I automatically assume this person is black when the only Lucretia that all three of us know happens Isn't to be white. white girl. <laughs> Lucretia, and they just pass over that, and they're like, oh, Lucretia's not going to work here, <laughs> right? So that's what I think is at an all-time high. And discrimination. In a lot of ways. Being, being discriminatory, but not as racist as they were before. Because I've noticed a lot of people, and I've noticed a lot of white people, are very comfortable around black people who also act stereotypically white. It's the concept of how they're acting. That's what it really comes down to. Like, it's not that they have a problem with the skin tone. They have a problem with the cultural aspects or what they think of as the wrong place. And that's what they have a big problem with. Did you just separate the skin tone from the culture? I did. You can't do that. But I can. And I think a lot of people do. I and I think a lot, a of, people lot of people do. do. I don't think it, maybe it shouldn't be done, but it is done. It is that done. is something that's that what I'm saying. Can't. No, I don't think you. I don't think you should. And I think that when when African Americans assimilate all the way into Caucasian culture fully, that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to separate their skin tone from their culture, and and what that represents. That's their whole. That's the whole thing. If you watch, I'll give you something simple that a lot of people were exposed to. But there was a. Uh, a special on ESPN about OJ and his entire life and how he basically disavowed his yes. blackness and his culture and his roots to the blackest parts of uh, San Francisco with his friends and family and all that because as he was uh, growing in sports, he was trying to transcend race and be OJ Simpson and not, re not have any association with his color or his culture. And I think that that ended up being his downfall 
uh, because then there was no one to actually have his back or be supportive of him when he went through what he went through. Not to be, make this about OJ, but to bring it back to uh, trying to uh, make a disconnect between the color of a person's skin and the culture that they are. I think that the two actually go but in black hands. There is, there should not be a conversation where black means ghetto, and that's what the media has overwhelmingly yes. tried to project onto people. No, you know who's black? Uh, T. S. Eliot. You know who's black? Marcus Garvey. You know, uh, know who's back? A uh, black um, Martin Luther King. These are black people. Ralph Ellison was black, very educated, very articulate, very well spoken. I don't think anyone would question their blackness, correct? correct. And yet people do. When it's now, and when I say now, I remember the the day that I decided that I was going to not have a separate voice anymore. Because growing up, especially in the area that I grew up, I grew up in Potomac Gardens, mm -hmm. which is a which is a hood, which is a project in Washington D.C. There was a time where I had my school voice, meaning my white voice, yes, and my black voice, where uh, when I was speaking to black people in the neighborhood, yes. I would have a different tone and a different slang and a different way. So it went from, yes, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, to what up, yo, what up, y'all? And I decided, wow, why am I doing this? And I was very young at the time. I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I separating respect? Why am I deciding that a white teacher deserves more respect than a black, than a black neighbor? I'm going to call everyone sir. I'm going to call everyone ma'am. I'm going to give everyone the proper respect by speaking to them properly with proper, articulate, eloquent words that I know because I'm not going to play dumb anymore. That's what I decided. There's nothing, there's nothing black about being ghetto. There's nothing black about being stupid. There's nothing black about not speaking proper English. But here's the thing. I, I, I agree with that being a noble thing for you to say, I'm going to speak to everyone the same, uh, you know, I'm going to merge my two experiences and be one experience for everyone. But that then begs the question for me, what made you choose to speak to everyone with eloquence? Because you could have made the same choice nobly and spoke to everyone hood. You could have. Because and I can appreciate it's improper, I can, I can it's appreci improper speech. Call it, you can call it my improper. ideas are very, very urban. My speech patterns will not be. I have, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a gangster let me, let with me, a law Let degree. me put it like this. An Australian is going to talk Australian to everybody. With an Aust Australian we accent. We will hear their accent. Sure. So you chose to speak to everyone a certain way. Just because you say, yo, what's up, y'all, what's up, whatever, you don't say sir or ma'am, doesn't mean you're stupid. Doesn't mean that you have less intellectual capability. You made that choice at a young age to say, I'm going to sound like sure. whiter. It's not to whiter. See, I don't, that's see, that's, the, see, that's, I do. My I understand. Like is the, it whiter? The, don't you, I, I feel like saying it's whiter always gives us the less educated. Thank you. Uh, I didn't choose that, though. I'm telling you, he made that cognitive yeah, choice. But because, it doesn't mean that it's whiter because if you can know 50 black men that speak like that and, like, you know what, that, those are the black men right. that I want to speak like, it doesn't mean. Uh, but for you, I'm with you. I feel like I'm more comfortable. Talking the way that I talk in the vernacular. It, and you should, how I you use should it. I speak like... however you speak. If you if you add any negative connotation to African American culture, that's because you've been socially preconditioned. You've gone through symbolic way. interactionism and seen black people, and every time you saw it was on the worser thing, the smaller thing, the 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 not as desired thing, the black babies and and, the, and like every, from 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 jump. Black babies are playing with little white dolls, and and you can. Add, I've seen studies done where they I've asked you, and they asked the little black girls which one of these are prettier, and they go towards the white. Who's They've bad been preconditioned yes. based on yeah. the cartoon. The Disney, we didn't even get a black Disney princess till two, three years ago. Princess Tiana. All of those definitions and, and, and illustrations of love and everything has been based on what we thought. We have a white Jesus as the picture here. So if you've been socially preconditioned to think that black or darker is lesser than, then when you have a choice to linguistically choose how you'll speak to everybody, you're either going to go with your most natural or you're going to choose from the one that you're... So let me... Which, which one is most natural to let you? Let me correct that really quick. Yeah. And this is how I correct that. What you're automatically assuming mm -hmm. with this, and a lot of people in society are, is exactly how Kanisha put it, is that the blacker version is the more vernacular version. However, the word ain't is improper, so I will not speak improper English. I will speak correctly. Mm -hmm. That is not black or white. That is 
simple right or wrong. That is it. There's nothing black about being hood or ghetto. It is not because when you see a group of black men somewhere and they come out of nice cars and everyone assumes that they must be athletes or drug dealers or rappers and no one's first thought is, wow, that guy is a thoracic surgeon, that is a problem because some of the best thoracic surgeons in this country are black. black men and they should represent the stereotype just as much and it has nothing to do with speech pattern. If you feel you can call someone and tell if they're black or white because of the phone, that's a problem. So if I come here as my dad did as a foreigner and comes here, the objective goal should be to retain his original language, which is Farsi because he's from Iran, but also learn English and speak it without an accent properly in its proper form. That should be the objective goal. And it is the objective goal for a lot of people, which is why Africans come to this country and also have a disconnect with black Americans because they come to this country and they feel that these things are their goals and black American tries, the average black American in their opinion tries to, to, to muddy that view. Here's the, here's the thing. True, true equality and true fairness across race relations is not just being able to hear somebody on the phone and tell they're a different culture or say that's a white person or a black person and then to judge them accordingly. Assess that. Of course. The judging accordingly comes with being socially conditioned to think that there is a place for each race. But there, that's and what I'm Hold saying is, is proper English has no right, race. But I'm saying if I'm on the phone with someone and they sound like they speak Farsi as their first language, they sound like they speak Spanish as their first language, they sound like they're American black, or they sound like they are American white, or they sound like they are uh, recently just won a spelling bee, no matter how they sound, I should treat them equally as a person because that is how it should be. But here's the thing. Not we have to say, to, oh, this guy has an Indian accent. We have a cliche, I don't judge a book serious. by its color. And the Indian accent is the kid that won the spelling bee, right? Because we all know Indians always win spelling bees. I had him as the thoracic surgeon. Oh, but, okay. Okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. We have a concept. Which, by the way, I thought was a, a time period for dinosaurs. Okay, I thought it went to Jurassic, thoracic. thoracic. It did not. It does not. It does not. It does not. Um... Going back to your original point is we should, however, we do have, we have this saying, don't judge a book by its cover. You know why? Because it's human nature to judge a book by its cover. And that's why we have it. We don't have a saying that says breathe because naturally we just all breathe. So what happens is while we judge books by their cover, when you walk in, let's say, uh, God forbid, your mom had needed a surgery and the surgeon comes in looking like Master B and talking like, and talking like uh, little Yachty. Right? Who you have no idea who little y'all is. Yeah. Talk, speaking like plies. What's up, child? It's yeah. sweet boy. I'll say Saturday. <laughs> exactly. Sweet you surgery Saturday. Saturday. Would, right. you, would you feel comfortable at the risk call under the care your mother under this person's care? I'm a shooter. I'm Here's a thing. shooter. According to your logic, you should give them a chance just as much as you would a person who came in and spoke proper terms. I'm a shooter. I'm my own shooter. But we do all wear costumes. In fact, the the, the word persona I disagree. means mask. Here's the thing. There's a certain amount of professionalism I want the person who's going to be cutting my mom open and operating on. Of course. Yes. That has nothing to do with their nationality. There's a way. Of course it doesn't. There's a way that I would like to. speech the, and mannerisms. The speech and I'm the just saying that's, that's what I'm saying. If you come in and you are speaking as if you are educated and understand what you're talking about in this in this space, and it seems like you have a history of doing this successfully, there's a way a doctor carries himself. Whether an Indian doctor walks through the door, of course. whether a black doctor walks through the door, of course. whether a white doctor walks through the door, of but course. you have to understand where racism, racism exists and you've been socially preconditioned, regardless of the amount of degrees or the amount of eligibility to do this, when you see a black person come through that door, no matter how many degrees, you go... My mom's but not that's what, and that's what I'm saying. What I'm speaking on is the fact that a black person comes in the door. I have, I want no discrimination factor. Right, but no, I don't but want to assume I'm, that person not does not to speak say, properly. I, but what I'm trying to tell you is, it's not racism for me to say somebody walked through the door and carried themselves unqualified and unprofessionally. Just being black doesn't make you unqualified so and we're unprofessional. Not, we're not making different points here. If you here. talk like you lies, not different... I think you're on a different... What I'm saying is speaking properly is I don't not understand a the, I don't understand the example of, of Plies and somebody who's dressed because, a certain way and talking a certain way. Plies has a certain way of speaking. He's not like a surgeon. Uh, exactly. And, but people assume that that's the way black people speak. Yes. And I'm saying that is not... 
That is not intrinsically black. That is a condition, that is a mask that black society has placed on itself and others have placed on it as well. Now, which came first, I do not know, but I know that there are kids who I, copy that. Would you like that, me to tell you where it came from? Who copy that in order to sound and act more black. And yeah. that is not the natural state. All of, of that is, that's not on our culture. We have things that we've done as a culture, but a lot of the stuff that's happening is part of our uh, breaking down and rebuilding as African Americans. Okay? We've made a lot of things that were originally designed to tear us apart. We've made these things acceptable, and we've made them cool, and we've added our swag to it to justify its even existing. Now, I think we are agreeing to say just because the book is black doesn't mean what's inside of it can't do the job, the surgery, Whatever it is. Now, I, did, I didn't agree to that cliche. That's not my cliche. Yeah, I didn't, I'm, I, that yeah, I'm lost. Off. I'm a little. <laughs> what I'm saying is, if somebody is racist or they've been socially preconditioned to think that black is negative or have a bad connotation, to see anybody come through the door that is speaking right, talking right, or whatever, that has the same amount of law degrees as the next person of another nationality, and to think they aren't capable of doing this, that is the basis of racism. I agree now, with that. to take that further, where the prejudice applies, is to then develop a system at which that doctor can't get through that door anymore because you don't want to see that face anymore. I, I also agree with that. What I was... Uh, Kanisha, are you on page with me? Um, yeah, I'm listening. This is a good debate. I feel like I'm just in the middle, like, soaking it all up. What, I'm, what I'm speaking I'm, on is the, is the effect of, first, all the things that you're saying, I'm giving that... That is true. Yes. That is the base of racism. Let me make one more what point so that what I'm saying is there is no such thing as talking white. Yes, there is no such what's... thing as talking white. There's either speaking properly well, let me ask or you this. improperly. Is that there... is it. Okay. But we did invent a there cold is, slang. There is a such thing as talking white. And here's why. Because adversely, there's a such thing as talking black. I don't think so. I do. because You either we... speak educated or you do not. Understand. But education was something that we were denied yes. when we came here. We sure. were, we were t Our families were torn apart. We weren't allowed to read. We weren't allowed to write. We were learning English as our second language as we all spoke languages from different countries, continents, tribes. Uh, not continents, but countries and tribes. And having to pick it up, and you're speaking English as best as you can. So when you go through, we are only a few generations removed. A lot of this, a lot of the time it takes to develop phonetic, a perfect phonetic speaking, our language is one of the hardest in the world, we have been denied. Your great, great, great grandfather, if you were uh, African American descent, born in America, did not speak English very well. And that's not because he didn't he didn't want to. It's because schooling was denied. Speaking sure. exactly. So there is a such thing as speaking black. And what I'm saying is, once given the opportunity to do so, my great grandfather, while my great great grandfather wasn't was denied those opportunities, when mm -hmm. my great grandfather got that opportunity, when my grandfather got that opportunity, right. they then in the communities. That's when that black intellectualism was born because they decided as a group we will take advantage of these opportunities mm -hmm. and be the smartest, most intellectual, most intelligent, brilliant group of black people we can possibly be. Harlem Renaissance is born from that very foundation. So what isn't born from that is going back after that, after desegregation, and then reverting back to... Uh, reverting back to being uneducated. There's nothing inherently an education. There's nothing inherently black about being uneducated. And that's what I mean, because we are in a system where anyone in this country can take advantage. It might be more difficult, but then we have to take that upon our shoulders and be responsible to be the best us that we can be because of this but and I, not succumb to the system. But I feel like I feel like I understand what you're saying about blending in because why do I have to give up all that? Like we have our created slang, we have those things that are associated with us. Why do I have to give all We've that up? We've made it to beautiful. Speak? Yes, we and because the whole country and, the reason and that everyone I can't else speak. wants to talk like that and but I don't like it being associated with just being black. I don't know. But I'm you're going to judge it. About that. Uh, here's the thing. We talk about the Harlem Renaissance and yes, it was a heightened education. It was a higher education situation, and black was, and and, and blacks were, it, it was a phenomenal time, the Harlem Renaissance. But at the same time that you had a Langston Hughes who was putting together phenomenal poems uh, and using all of the English lang language, you had you had Moms Mabley doing the yes. Apollo right down the street, speaking in broken English. So that's what I'm telling you, blackness is not defined by how you speak. It's not defined by how you're dressed. It's not defined by your degrees. It's all of it. You can't just say, 
Here's the thing. If I put on a do-rag and you don't, and we have the same amount of knowledge of certain things, because I have a do-rag on, sure. which is designed for my hair, mm-hmm. I am judged by the cover of my book. But you, but to be appropriate, you do that all the time, which is why when you go into a bank, if you saw someone like Tehran with the bathrobe, who, by the way, I do have a list of degrees, if you saw me working at the bank, you wouldn't trust me with your money. That is the concept uh, no, no, no. of I per se, professionalism. Me, no, no, well, I'm general, not like that. But, listen, in general, see, the but that's okay. the basis yes, of racism. Like, that's yes. the thing. You uh, uh, Look, when you are doing a statistic yes. and there's an outlier, you actually don't just average in the outlier. What you do with the outlier is you throw it away right that's simple so when you say you and you're like well i'm different well great for you nate jackson but most of america does not agree with you they do judge books by their cover which is why doctors wear white bankers wear ties and uh gangsters sag their pants it is a custom that they have developed in order to uh, to institutionalize a system of being judged by what you wear. Police officers wear badges for that reason, which is why that famous joke uh, Chappelle has about, like, if a girl dressed, like, a certain way and then you assume she's a certain way but she's not, what if I dressed like a police officer and she was like, excuse me, officer, officer, and why would you assume I'm a cop? Just because I'm wearing a cop's clothing? Yes, we do that. What we should not do is attach race to that. These two are separate concepts, and those two separate concepts have been unfortunately blended in modern society where we assume black means this and white means that. When we look at black men in hoodies who get shot every day and arrested every day, one man in a, one white man in a suit and tie stole more money than every black man in a hoodie and committed more crimes than any black man in a hoodie all combined. Right, but what I'm saying is all of the outfits you just named, what someone should be wearing, Black people wear. That's what I'm saying as well. And we're not disagreeing on that. I understand thing. that. I'm not talking to Tehran. I'm talking to the viewers who are watching this to let you know what I think is wrong and why I think we have issues with race relations today. Is that when they hear about pants were sagging, they assume that was a black man. But it's man. not. It's, but you guys have to, a lot of that is institutionalized through movies, through art. Through exactly. Music, all but those at the core, that, but this we have to understand and accept that because that's what has to be rewired. That's why so many black men are being shot, killed, and murdered right now by law enforcement of all nationalities. Yes. All, but that's why. That's the thing. Because you've been shown in movies that white beaters sagging, do rags, this kind of car, headlights out, always equals to. They got guns, they, and my life is in danger. So they go into a situation with a heightened level of fear, and they don't handle it the same way they would as when they're pulling over a kid in Beverly Hills who's waving a gun. But I would also say we need to take responsibility for that as well. That's as fine. A black, as a black community, when we're sitting there talking about selling dope off the iPhone, when every song, we're going out of our way to convince people that we are hardened criminals and drug dealers and all that, with our music, with our movies, and then going, but why do you think I'm that? When we're blasting it, well, we've kind of gone out of our way to do so. Not, and not we necessarily. Need to take we've gone out of our way because we do, but we also, the people in power have gone out of their way to make sure that pay us to do those type of things, to make sure that's what's being projected because they no, can't that, get it on that. Look at how many people to... are rapping. Why mm-hmm. would you go right past a conscious rapper to show trash? Yeah. And well, to because further push to that. dumb people down. Well, not only that, Possibly. exactly, and you're trying to monetize, and you're trying to yes. sell. Yeah, so that's what that's about. And I'm saying we are now seeing the error of our ways. We are now seeing where that the, the tipping point, we're there. We've made it to the point where you have shown black people in a light so long in such a way that now our lives have not been given as much value as somebody of the same age, same gender, the same amount of time on earth. Uh, and to the point where there have been times there's a legal report where judges say that when a black kid commits a crime and a white kid commits a crime and then the black kid gets th- up to three times, the average is three times mm-hmm. more punishment than the white child, mm-hmm. They said the one of the number one reasoning, 46%, said that it's because the black child just looked older. That was, that was real. Tamir Rice got shot at 12 because the police officer said he looked 23, waving a toy gun. That is a true statement. So when we're looking at these things, it's, it has a lot to do with projections, which is why I began with the speech pattern, which I, re, which I was why I began and then spoke about the music, is because a lot of it is stuff that we can 
we can break ourselves. We cannot, we don't have to portray or perpetuate the mm -hmm. stereotypes amongst ourselves. And it happens because when I was in school and decided to speak properly, black kids were the first ones, and I was getting straight A's, and I was valedictorian, black kids were the first ones to be like, oh, you sell out. Why I'm don't you want why. to? Why don't you want to perpetuate stereotypes? Why do I not want to? What are the consequences of it? The consequences are getting shot by the police. It's what else? Perpetuating stereotypes, but you also you place yourself in a box. Right, but what else? What are, what are the other consequences of perpetuating a stereotype? I mean, you place yourself in a box where now so you, you can't said Lucretia can't get a job. Cops will shoot you. What else? I mean, these are main points. What are, what are you looking for right now, Nate? More examples. More examples of what what's bad with stereotypes? Because a lot of Americans think that stereotypes just happen in, in America. They do not. These jobs. stereotypes are perpetuated throughout the world. Right. In but other jobs, parts of cops, the world, people. Jobs, cops. What else? Uh, just success, level of success. So it's all. Of, it's there's all, a ceiling over your success. Of course, there's, it's all part of. The, it's all culminates into one thing. So it starts like, if. Two objects are traveling the same speed, and they go like this. Mm -hmm. In physics, they'll just eventually, as given over time, they will separate until the universe is between them two. That's what's happening. As we speak, you're looking at the separation. Not only did we not start, we're not allowed to start the race of the race soon enough, but everything is going to the point where we had a president elected in 2008, the first black president, who's actually just the first mixed race president. He is equally black and white. And yet people only recognize his blackness because, for some reason, there's an overwhelming thought that white is right and even a drop of black blood makes you black. I don't know about the white is right part, but definitely one drop of black is supposed to make you black. Well, that's where. That's where we don't say the white but is he, right as here's, much. But here's what true. I'm saying, though. When I talk about how I feel with race relations and where we're at in our country today, my assessment of this is affected by the consequences of being black. And perpetuating the stereotypes of be, that of, of black people, right? Sure. Do rags, sagging pants, not speaking proper English, and all this actually have tangible consequences. They do. That's what's wrong with the system. Why can't a child who speaks a certain way, walks a certain way, talks a certain way, who's different than another child who speaks a different way, talks a different way, walks a different way? Why can't they have equal opportunities? Because that's not that's the system the, in any That's way. not the, the system here. That's not the system that's anywhere. That's not the system anywhere. In every country, for some reason, the, dark, the darker you are, the harder it is, and, and you're it discriminated against in every country. I have it's my friend, she was uh, from Cambodia. She was very, very dark, and she faced discrimi yeah, discrimination. Yeah, but Cambodians are... are uh, it doesn't. They, they're, an out, they're an outlier as well. They're an anomaly as well. Because Cambodia is another one of the countries where they have citizens that are literally fair-skinned all the way to dark-skinned and India, live north and south. India, yeah. oh, India, India, India there's a few like, places. Yeah. That's not, at that point, that's a billion people. You're no longer in an outlier society when you have a billion people and they react to race very much the same where there's actually a caste system in place. And more important, there, when you go to India, there's a bunch of skin lightning cream everywhere, right. skin brightening cream yes. everywhere you go. Because for some reason, dark has been associated with negative things and maybe there's a system in place for that but i will say maybe well, maybe for, maybe for, there's for a, dark to be negative a, here's what i'm saying a, america is, is great world. enough okay. america is great enough we're the land of the free and the home of the brave we built our country after leaving another one we had issues with we are great enough to call ourselves to action and actually take on the system that makes it unequal. But that's what you have to There's understand. A lot of the people that run the system don't want it to be unequal. Which that's is, what you have to understand. Which is why you, they don't want it they to don't, be equal. They, they don't want it to be equal. Right, that's because it benefits them to be unequal. Yes, because now, when you're the king, you don't never want to stop being the king. Right. Now, sure. what, I, what I'm saying, the reason why I brought all this back is to say because of that. Yes. Because that inequality can be benefited from by the person who's on top of the system. I think that we aren't that much further along than when you say we've come out of. You say the millennials are more concerned about Pokemons and all of that. I say the people who are in charge and benefiting from the system are happy Pokemon is keeping us distracted. Sure, yes. but here's the thing. They can't live forever. They don't live forever. Mm -hmm. But the system this. can. The system will not. And we see this today as the people are breaking systems, as bitcoins become more popular, as people are voting politically outside. The Green Party has the highest amount of movement that it's ever had. Ever. That's what I'm actually 
impressed by is that even though the system, let me get this correct, it yeah. is very bad. Mm -hmm. It is the best it's ever been. And that's why when I say when it comes to race, and you said when it comes to like do rags and pants tagging and all that, let me point this out too. If I dress goth, a lot of stereotypes would uh, would would uh, exactly. apply to me as well. It's not Judging just black for me. I'm not, saying. Judging but somebody a, by their cover. Exactly, but what I'm going is to is just the race. So now, if it's a goth person and a black person, so the goth person is being equally judged for their clothing as much as a, uh, as a let's say, rap-looking black person. Right. But the black person, on top of that, has blackness to that, blame. Yes. And that's We're the just problem. talking about the exterior. Whether now, it's epidermis or it's a goth it, outside. But what I'm saying is, we let's keep this to race. Yes. We're talking about the system of race. Right, but race is also culture. And there's a system in place that is perpetuating. There's a system in place that is making it more difficult on people with the epidermis and or black skin. Uh, sure, but here's but the thing. It, it, I don't but, think it's but culture. Let me finish this. It is not culture. It's for, it's for sure it's culture, It's not too. culture because Africans are black, very black, and they don't have do-rags and saggy pants. They come over here in dashikis sometimes. Right. right. So but they are also... They're also they're victims. Also in, exactly. That's what I'm saying. But this in a is different more way. than just your skin or you being dressed as God. And yet we There's, have Nigerians who are leading the minorities in in affluence in affluence in professional careers. So right, while Nigerians are becoming about doctors... That. Hood doctor, uh, hood, hood kids are not becoming doctors. So there is a discrepancy. Right, and but so that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is people are discriminating against us based on our skin and also our culture. There are people that are not of black skin that are deep in our culture. There are people who have black skin that are not invested in what we would consider the, the nut of black culture. Either way, you're black and you can be discriminated against. Either sure. way, you you are you are doing black culture, and you can be uh, discriminated. But that's against. what I'm saying. Calling it black culture is unfair to everyone else that is also black. No, it's these to are the, think that do rags are a black culture thing. They are a southern but they thing. Are, they are two they different are things. They are an American thing. They're two different. But things. I think it definitely. I'm sorry. I feel like it definitely could be a culture thing because we are the one with waves. It, like naturally, it was for waves. So culturally, your black men wear do rags for waves. Yes, but have you ever seen a white person wearing a do rag? Yes. And have you ever seen an Asian sale. person wearing a do rag? Yes. Right. But, but so that's when them it's trying to, to try to appropriate. Right. To, but what yes, I'm saying is, exactly, they the are literally on. being culture vultures and assimilating into African American culture. Yes. And that puts them at just as much risk. I don't think when so. When somebody's judging by the cover or saying anyone of this culture is is the sub genre, then yeah, they are just I, as much risk. So, that's what racism can, is. But here's the thing: if you can take off your do rag yeah. and not any longer be a victim, you're not. That is actually privilege, is when you can learn yes, about racism. Can. When you can mm -hmm. take off, that is part of privilege. Because yeah. I can never take off my skin. This epidermis is always there. And that's what the problem is. Is that that's why I'm saying it goes back to the system of race right. rather than anything else. That the system of place that you're speaking of exists mm -hmm. more than ever, but this race, which is at, the, at, at a low, it still exists and it's very prevalent in our society. And that's why. So while you're speaking on placism, which is what initially I even said is at an all-time high, that concept of racism that is at a low is still extremely prevalent in our society. It is extremely the reason why we have so much strife amongst the people, and it's the most divisive term of general na the nature of unity, which this, this country is supposed to be. We call it a community because it's communication and unity together, and yet when we see it, there is no communication and unity amongst people of the upper echelon black class and upper, uh, the lower echelon of black class, meaning that even in the black society, we see a division, let alone when it gets to the white people. Before when, you open it up that far, sure, we can dial it back. And, and I will say, I agree with you to what you're saying, I believe. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is, in addendum to our epidermis and our skin being something that's not a choice and being discriminated against for it, I think that people are also discriminated against for culture. Here's the thing. The system cannot even be effective if all it focuses on is skin. That's not an effective system. If the system is going to break down a people and a culture of people, you have to attack the culture. You have to say, 
They do these things in these communities. This is where we will police. They eat these things in these communities. This is where we will put this type of food. They do these things in this in this field. This is what we will show. So if you have 10 rappers, you only show the ignorance, then you can perpetuate that our entire culture is ignorant, which can put us in danger when you then put your cops in our situation where they've been socially preconditioned to then police that and protect and serve. They think they are. And I'm saying that that that's is... why the culture it that's what the system is attacking our culture and skin is a that's just but we get to also. decide because black culture is is very new we get to decide what right. our dollars are our biggest way of voting yeah. we do that's not fine. have to purchase but when we talk about discrimination music, and we, we talk about you anything. changing your vernacular from speaking whiter or black or I, wanna... I said that's in, and that's what i meant from the beginning there is no white or black way of speaking there is only but what i'm telling English you is on several levels, the way racism works is you're still black. I can see it. 100%. Whether you sound like it or not. And that's Come what I'm saying. Come through that door to operate on my mom, but and your black ass ain't doing it. I can be that's educated. That's racism. And I can be educated. If I, can, if, I ask, if I ask 100 black kids in high school right now yep. to name me 10 Young Thug songs, they can name me 10. I, can, I ask them, what are the lyrics to Panda? They can tell me the whole thing. What are your t first 10 amendments? I guarantee you... 90% can't tell me three. I think it would depend That's on what school you're at. That has nothing to I think do with if you were at. I think if you were at a, a school in what Chicago with 100% graduation rate and 100% and a, and, and 100 graduation rate headed into college, that you may get different answers out of those students. Do they know more about songs? Sure, because black people are kinesthetic learners. Why? We weren't even taught from the beginning to learn other forms. of. That's why holding a book and reading it is a little bit more difficult. Kinesthetically, sure. we want to touch it, grab it, hold it, feel it. Black people love science. There are amendment songs. We wrote, I'm just a bill oh. from Capitol Hill. Hey. We can listen to those things, right? Yeah. So we have the opportunity to better ourselves. If we know all these things, right. then we can change and we can be And that's where parents better. come in. And that's what no, I'm what saying. he's saying is, if we understand that this is, if, if we understand that perpetuating these stereotypes ends in certain things, then why would we continue to perpetuate the stereotypes? Why not make the decision, the own decision, to hold yourself accountable? Pull your pants up. Speak differently. Go to the school. You have the ability to learn all of these things. You have the ability to, to change who you are so that you can be accepted into this this society better. And then change it from the top. And what I'm saying is that is the problem with the system. Racism in and of itself is what makes that ridiculous that you to even have so to do that in the first place. But too. any Listen, system because, needs to be broken that way. Even Gandhi had to be a lawyer in order to free India. That's the way systems work. You can collapse a system or you from can within. work within the system and make it to the top and then change it. So if President Obama started sagging his pants and wearing do-rags and it became more acceptable, that would be a different conversation. Of course, but if all Doctors not. sagged and all police wore do rags. It would it would change the it social change, construct. But it, is, it is not. But so not. that social construct is created. What isn't created is my future as a black man in this country. But and as I, a black man, I can go to college and I can get a degree yeah. and I can go to upper levels of degree and I can get a doctorate in something and I don't have to succumb and think that selling drugs and crack in my own neighborhood is cool because there's nothing cool about that and there's nothing black about that. Yes, but I do think you can do all the things you just said that was about positive and enriching yourself. You can do all that while sagging with the do-rag in black skin. I did. I did it in the bathroom. See what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is I also understand when I face discrimination because of my bathrobe, I understand that. But just, when I face discrimination yeah. because of the color of my skin, that is something that is unacceptable and I cannot understand. Right, but what we're talking about now is racism, systems, the system we're in, and what, why is there systematic oppression? Why is there systematic prejudice? Why is different races dealing with different experiences? And starting from basically, it's like golf. Some people start from the white tees. Other people start from way in the back. Why is it like that? Well, I think there's more than just, the, there's systems in place. And what we aren't acknowledging is something that I do still see prevalent in our, in our society. Is, have you read the Willie Lynch letter? Of course. Of course. So if the systems that he suggested in his six, seven, or eight page letter for saying how to break a man, how to break a culture, how to break a person, how to make a slave to last for years and years and centuries after he's gone are still in place. If we still put a value on the gradient of skin in India, in Cambodia, and right here at home, then how can we say that we are now in, when I say how I feel, when I give the state of my union based on race, how do, how do I give my number? I take all of that into consideration and say that I think that right now we are at 
three. So you have a problem. The problem, the basis of your problem is that he said four or five and then he feels like it's better. Is that what we're... No, because I feel I feel like he's, he has a right to his numbers yeah. by all means. What I don't like hearing, honestly, what, I, what bothers me and it's okay. beginning to bother me is when somebody says, change your this, change your that, change your this, alter this so that you can... But operate, I would say the same thing to a white this, kid of lower in, uh, socioeconomic status. Right, I would but say people the same tell us thing. how we're supposed to behave in certain rooms, how we're supposed to behave. Everybody. When, it's right. not just one person. Right. So you like feel like you're everyone. conforming to the people that and are, have set all the systems in place exactly. so that you can blend in with them. And so that I can blend in and still not have the benefits that they get from it because I'm already the wrong color and the wrong culture. You begin that's, getting the benefits. It's because you yeah. are in a situation where you are more educated. Yeah. You are more professional, yeah. and that's just a play. I would give the exact same suggestion to a, a kid from Alabama who was white yep. who acted like trailer trash. I would say, hey, trailer trash, you don't have to act that way. And in fact, it's actually that division that allows for lower socioeconomic white people in this country to constantly vote against their self-interest yes, in political do. polls <laughs> because they divide themselves from the black people. Not realizing that when we say let's limit things like Medicaid and Medicare, it affects them a lot more, 68% more, just to be uh, statistically factual, to the point where s that many more people, white people. percent of all statistics are made up. Sure, but that sounds really cute and funny, but the truth is statistics are true and they do exist and the census does exist and that the government has a very valid great system for keeping these statistics and they tell you these things these are things that as a person who has any type of access to information which we all should at this time right. we can we are the most learned learned generation and with the most access and we decide against it you read the Willie Lynch, Lynch papers. Did you read them? Yes. You read the Willie Lynch papers. I read the Willie Lynch papers. It is now up to me to break that because now I know that that's what you're doing. But when I succumb to that, knowing that that's what you're doing, that's when it's uh, first time it's my fault and second time it's yours. I agree. You know? But my question is that I beg of our culture, of our society, if this is America, this is great, and this is a country who is, who's always been forward and about change and and doing the right thing, then why can't we assess our own system honestly? Because it, why would you want Have, to if I'm, you're in the system I of privilege? I understand that. If, you've, uh, if you're in the system of privilege, if you've been benefiting from the system being set up the way it is, and you know you have, it's been a good run. But it's time for equality. Why would you give that up? But why, why, no, in the I'm history of man, you, no one's ever given that up. I'm just no it sounds idea, but it's, given up it's power. fairy tale at that point. How? Yes. At that point, because it's, it's not realistic. Because it's not realistic. It's, it, this is like the idea. So of is it more realistic for me to change who I am in my essence just to try and have no, personal No, because I, I agree with you on a lot of. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I I, I'm kind of in the middle <laughs> here. Do you think? Do you think that Langston Hughes changed who he was? Do you think he changed who he was to fit in? Do you think Marcus Garvey changed who he was to fit in? Do you think that uh, Martin Luther King changed who he I was? I think that... Malcolm X I think became that, extremely educated and well-spoken. Uh, yeah, every time you say education, it's almost like the loophole to the whole conversation. Anyone can have access to education. That's not 100%. something that we're banned from now. What I'm saying is racism, racism is against whether you're smart, dumb, or, or in the middle. But we could fight it more if we were Marcus smart Garvey, and not dumb Marcus or in the Garvey middle. did not conform. His whole Garveyanism movement was to say, let's go back, go to, back to Africa and start our own communities. Malcolm X was saying, they ain't never going to see us as equal, so every time they shoot one of us, let's shoot two of and them. And yet became extremely Dr. educated, King both said, of those people. Yeah, but you keep saying education as because if that's, that's what thing. changes it. That is the It is not what, what changes saying. it. If you just told me a doctor can walk through the door with black skin and I don't respect them enough to do my mom's surgery. Until that doctor is the only one that can do your mom's surgery and that's what I'm right. saying. Right. Now you let him do it because he's the black and doctor And I'm going to tell you left. how we allowed that happen because in 1980 when my father came here as an Iranian, mm -hmm. Iranians were terrorists. And now the stereotype is that Iranians are wealthy. And they and let me let me put this to rest. A lot of these people did not come here with money. They did not. They left everything that they loved and they knew back in their country because they were forced to leave politically or otherwise. And they came here and they overcame those stereotypes yeah. through their work. And I still don't think that they are as strong as a community as they should be. Right. So when I look at the black community and I see my mom's side of the family and I'm looking at my dad. Who, Which side of your family is the African-American side? My mom. Okay. And I look at my dad's side and my dad 
his English is deplorable, okay? But he works very hard to be as educated as possible right. on certain things and understands the concept of con uh, credit and money and all these things that my uncles and my mom sh should be able to understand. And my, see the difference between my mom, who's the commissioner at HUD, and then my uncles who are locked up. I see that difference. And I see that because it is the indifference of how they decided to explore and utilize the system. The very system meant to break us is the system that we can use to fix us. We can fix amongst ourselves if we went to polling, if we went to voting, if we used our united powers economically right. and said we will keep it within the black business. Something, by the way, that we did during segregation. Black Wall Street was yes. destroyed because of this. So there's nothing, nothing impossible with us we're not giving anything up when we're gaining so much more that's what i'm saying so when i use education as a loophole it's because even as a child i was taught that knowing is half the battle and now we know and we're still losing that's our fault we can change all of this within ourselves we keep waiting for white people to give us stuff we can go and take it ourselves if we want to phenomenal speech i <laughs> mean it now Here's what I say to that. If the system has been perpetuated by one side to another and the other side has now taken it to the point where we are, uh, w it's tougher, and you're saying, but now you have the ability to get out and do these things. Get out and do it. Do better for yourself. That's fine. But at what point do you say, uh, let's hold the oppressor accountable? We Listen, we hold tried on, that. Because I hella listened for a while sure. right there. And I want to let you know that the different experience that your parents have had, it, the experience is different. Your father came here in 1980. He came here. So his experience in America is different than somebody who was brought here, sure. who was completely broken down, sure. whose history is gone. I can't tell you after my great, 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 great stop there. Done. Don't know what we originally spoke. Don't know if I was royalty. Don't know what the music was. Don't know any of my original cultures. Any, how, why? Because my family was a part of slavery. Sure. Because my... My, they didn't. It wasn't a choice to come here. Whether you thought that they were poor when they came, terrorists when they came, you knew what an African American was in America. They were taking free African Americans and putting them into slavery because all African Americans were slaves. So it's an entirely different starting point. You can leave everything you had somewhere, but you had it at one point and you chose to leave it. Having it snatched from you, dropped in a new place to learn all new customs and cultures, and you are not equal to who has you there mm -hmm. to this day based on the system so why walk backwards i didn't say walk backwards but there are people who do so that's fine but that, i'm not addressing them who i'm addressing is the people who actually continue to move continue to operate in the system because it benefits them turning the blind eye or acting like because we are who we are that we have to be judged and treated differently or accordingly or a placist placism Racism does not work prejudice-wise without placism. Black people need to know their place. They can't live here. They can't have their own Wall Street. They can't be in this neighborhood. That's what gets us talked to, approached, oppressed, dealt with. That's what this all is based on. True equality is to hear somebody talk different, speak different, look different, and still respect them on the same level and give them the same opportunities that you or your children have. That's true equality. That's true freedom. And I think America is great enough to get us back to that point. No matter where we disagree on or agree on with blackness or culture or where we started from, our starting point, we can agree that the system right now, whether we're... is broken. It's broken. Let's go through the process of being a phenomenal country, one of the best on the planet, if not the best on the planet, and start to fix the system. Well, I think I have to say everything is not going to be overnight, and that's where being parents, and we have to go to the youth for this because it's not going to be overnight. We have to get them involved and get them to... I, I'm just so crazy right now. Like I just, I just feel like everything for me is with the youth because a lot of adults... They're really not. No, you're right. Because you know, we're, 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 we're going to we're die. We're stuck in our ways. We're going to leave it to somebody. Yes. The children are our future. We have to go with the kids. So man. the system either continues to go or is uh, less devalued or broken or whatever based on how what our children do. Yeah. So you have to Here. say, hey, I'm going to go to the community center today and I'm going to teach these kids about finance because for us, I feel like as black people, just to for finances, economics, a lot of stuff we're lacking in that comes from our parents and our grandparents and I feel like the ball was dropped somewhere and then we just have to go back into these communities and people that know 
you know, exactly what they're doing to Ron and teach these kids how to change everything. Well, there you have it on today's episode of Headlines with Headliners, which is, um, we had several points on here. I think we kind of touched each we one. We touched number so one. For the, for the, <laughs> yeah, this was a nice, I, I felt like I was in the middle of an argument. I was just it like. It was not. This is a comprehensive conversation, yes. and this conversation does not begin or end with us. So right. if you are you are at home, you are listening, we would love to hear from you, and I'm sure your friends and family would love from, to hear from you as well. So please continue this conversation. Please. This isn't about Nate or me being right or wrong. This no. is about us deciding and figuring out what we can do yep. to make this a better place in a better world. Be the change. That's it. Let's make America great. Make let's, make, America great. let's make America great yeah. for everybody. When you say for the yeah. first time, I, I was dead the in the middle. How about that? I, now I, uh, I want to apologize <laughs> yeah. to the viewers who submitted uh, these uh, questions regarding interracial, interracial relationships, uh, policing of the black community, and entertainment. Uh, we kind of brushed over gradients of uh, skin, how we feel about it in the system, and we'll get to it. We will. There's more headlines with headliners. For sure. So, uh, please catch me on Wild and Out MTV every Thursday night, uh, season eight, and NateJacksonComedy.com or on Instagram at Mr. Nate Jackson. Teron, where can we find you? Uh, I'm at the Lab Factory every Monday and Thursday at 10, amongst other nights. I'm also on So Me on Fox. Please, uh, please at me at I am Teron on all social media. The diva, the dime, the goddess, Kanisha Bus. Where can they find you? Hey, check me out over at All Deaf Digital at our new movie, Major Deal, and Sirius XM. And Kanisha, K A N I S H A, is comedy. Yes, she is. Awesome. Yeah. Make sure you check everybody out. Follow us, and uh, we appreciate you. Appreciate the time you gave us today. This has been Headlines with Headliners. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff. We would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.